first thing to keep in mind is that any movement is good movement. You don't need to run a marathon, lift heavy weights, or cycle hundreds of kilometers. Anything that gets you off the couch and moving will provide some sort of benefit. If walking a minute or two is all that you can handle right now, start with that and try to increase it by a little bit every day. The second thing to know is that people with type 1 diabetes who are physically active live longer and tend to have fewer or less severe complications. Exercise and physical activity help prevent or slow down some of the problems that type 1 diabetes can cause with eyes, kidneys, the heart, bones, muscles, and nerves. Growing old gracefully, whether you have type 1 diabetes or not, can only happen if you move your body. We know from research that fear of hypoglycemia is the greatest barrier to being physically active for people with type 1 diabetes. There are several things you can try to slow down that drop in blood glucose that happens with activity. The first of these is to make sure that you're active when levels of circulating insulin are lower in the body. This means avoiding activity shortly after meals when your meal bolus will be in circulation. If you're using an insulin pump, basal rates can be decreased 90 minutes to two hours in advance to decrease the amount of insulin in circulation. If you're using multiple daily injections, the basal insulin dose can be decreased the night before or the morning of exercise. How much you need to decrease it depends on what type of activity you're going to be doing and how long you will be doing it. If planning that far in advance isn't possible, having a snack before exercise with a smaller bolus than usual can also work. For many people, including more intense exercise as part of that physical activity session can also help stop that drop in blood glucose or at least slow it down. This can include short sprints, high intensity intervals, or even lifting weights. Being physically active before breakfast when insulin levels tend to be lower is another useful option if you're struggling with hypoglycemia. If you're active later in the day, a bedtime snack or a decrease in basal insulin before bed can help prevent overnight lows. Having injuries or diabetes related complications doesn't need to stop you from being active. Low intensity activities can still be recommended for all but the most severe diabetes related complications. Where problems with feet, ankles, knees, and lower back are concerned, water walking in the pool or gentle swimming can help reduce the impact of activity while providing all of the benefits of movement. There are also many exercises that can be performed in a seated position, either with light weights or elasticated resistance bands, which can improve strength and may have benefits for managing blood glucose. If you're trying to be more active and you don't know where to start, try to find activities that you enjoy and people you like doing them with. This will increase your chances of remaining active. If you're willing and able to invest some time and money, a qualified personal trainer or a coach who understands how to manage insulin and carbohydrates around physical activity will always be a good investment in your health. They should also remind you of the importance of buying good shoes that fit well and checking your feet regularly for blisters and sores. Finally, remember that exercise and physical activity can be accumulated throughout the day. Moving even a few minutes at a time has its benefits if you struggle, struggle to find the time for a longer exercise session. Overall, moving more and sitting less will help you feel better and live longer. Hello, my name is Dr. Jonathan Little, and I'm an associate professor in the School of Health and Exercise Sciences at the University of British Columbia. And what I want you to keep in mind if you have type 2 diabetes with regards to exercise is that every single bout of exercise works. And I think this is important to remember when we look at the physiology or the metabolism of exercise and how it affects your blood sugar. So there's two things that I, I would like you to, uh, to remember or uh, keep in mind when you, with regards to exercise. The first is that when you exercise, your muscles need some energy and they get that energy by taking up glucose or sugar from the blood. So you get an immediate benefit to your blood glucose levels um, with every bout of exercise. So regardless of whether you've stuck to a training program or you haven't exercised uh, for the, the past uh, weeks or months or even years, you're gonna get a benefit from, from going out and doing some activity. So something as simple as going for a walk after a meal is one of the best strategies for helping to lower your blood sugar because your muscles are gonna need energy. They're gonna suck the glucose out of the blood and lower your blood sugars uh, immediately after or during the exercise bout. The second thing that every bout of exercise works is that exercise makes your insulin work better. And we know that in type two diabetes, 
you have what's called insulin resistance or your insulin doesn't work as well to tell the muscles and other tissues to take glucose up out of, out of the blood. And when you do a bout of exercise, for the next 24 to 48 hours, your muscles get sensitized to that insulin. So insulin's working better for at least a day or two after every bout of exercise you do. And again, that should be encouraging to tell you uh, that if you haven't exercised for, for the last bit or you haven't been consistent, you know that you're gonna get these two benefits of exercise. The first one I talked about, your muscles suck the glucose up right away so it can lower your blood sugar. And then your insulin's gonna work better for the next day or two. So you're gonna get these benefits from every single bout of exercise that you do, regardless of whether you're sticking with a training program or you're losing weight or any of those other uh, potential benefits of exercise, you get these two amazing benefits from every single bout of exercise that you do. Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Lamkin and I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at Diabetes Canada and I'm here to tell you about a fantastic program that I'm encouraging you to be a part of. From September 1st to September 30th, Diabetes Canada is hosting the second annual Lace Up to End Diabetes presented by GMS uh, Health and Travel Insurance. So Lace Up is really something for everyone. Um, so it's Lace Up 10K Do It Your Way. So you can bike, you can hike, you can dance, uh, you can walk your way to 10K. And this year, because we are um, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin, we were offering a 100K challenge as well. So lots of opportunity to get involved, um, meet with family and friends, go for a walk. Um, register today at laceup.diabetes.ca. We really want to see you out there. We want um, to raise some much needed funds for advocacy and research and the opportunity to end diabetes together. So thank you so much for your time. Please do come out, join us, have some fun. Take care. Hi there, it's Kelly Lumpkin again here to tell you about Lace Up to End Diabetes presented by GMS Health and Travel Insurance. So Lace Up is not only an opportunity to get connected, get physically active, get outside, have some fun, but it's also an opportunity to create awareness and create awareness and support for the 11.5 million Canadians that are living with diabetes and prediabetes. You can do this, you can help by liking and sharing the Diabetes Canada Facebook page and Instagram account. Like, share, participate, post what you're doing to lace up and connect with thousands of other Canadians across the country this September. And also what's really cool about Lace Up is the incentive pricing. So not only do you get a great feeling when you participate, but also when you raise funds, you get incentive pricing and um, and we just want to send a special thank you. So for $75, you receive exclusive access to Lyft Session, which is a health and wellness app, and three free classes. That's available until October 31st. And you, at $150, you receive one of these fantastic um, Diabetes Canada Lace Up Buffs. And then at $250, Pump Heels has generously donated and partnered with Diabetes Canada to offer t-shirts custom made for Lace Up to End Diabetes presented by GMS. And then special this year for the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin is the if any participants that raise a thousand dollars or more gets their name put on a legacy stone that will live um, for eternity at um, the Banting House Museum. So how special is that in um, celebration and memory of the 100th anniversary of the discovery of insulin? Included in that is a um, special opportunity to do a Q&A with Grant Maltman, curator of Banting House from Banting's Bedroom, as well as uh, and a lot of other uh, cool incentives. So we're just asking you get involved, create awareness, and become a part of a fantastic community. Thanks.